Today, we're taking a closer look at EUOS, a community-driven initiative that aims to develop a Linux distribution specifically tailored for the European Union's public sector. With the growing demand for digital sovereignty and cost-effective, secure IT solutions, EUOS could represent a major shift away from proprietary software like Windows. But can it really disrupt the status quo in the EU? What is EUOS? EUOS is not an entirely new operating system, but a proof of concept that builds on a well-established Linux foundation. It's based on Fedora, a mature and robust Linux distribution, and uses KDE Plasma as its desktop environment. The project's innovative twist is its layered architecture. This means that while all users start with a common base, there are options to add customized layers for national, regional, or organization-specific requirements. This design promises uniformity and central management, while still allowing flexibility and tailored features for diverse public sector needs. The motivation behind EU OES. The idea behind EU OS is rooted in the principle of public money, public code. In simple terms, if taxpayers are funding software for public institutions, the source code should be open and accessible to everyone. This approach has several advantages. Cost efficiency. Without expensive licensing fees, governments can reduce IT expenditures significantly. Independence. A public sector, Linux distribution limits dependency on a handful of commercial vendors, reducing vendor lock-in. Transparency and security. Open source software allows for thorough code audits and rapid security updates, enhancing trust and reliability. Modular customization. Thanks to its layered design, EUOS can be adapted to the specific needs of different public entities while maintaining a common base. Historical context and comparisons. EUOS follows in the footsteps of several pioneering projects. Gend Buntu, developed for the French Gendarmerie to meet specific law enforcement needs. Limux, launched in Munich to standardize and secure government IT systems. Other examples. Projects like Astra Linux in Russia and Kylin in China also aim to reduce reliance on proprietary software. However, one point of discussion is the choice of Fedora as the base. While Fedora is renowned for its innovation and robust support, some critics have suggested that a distribution with European roots, like OpenSUSE, might have been a more fitting choice for a project focused on regional digital sovereignty. Nonetheless, Fedora's container-friendly design and maturity make it a strong candidate for this ambitious initiative. Potential impact on Windows and public IT. If successfully adopted, EUOS could change the digital landscape for European public institutions. With Windows nearing its end of life for many older systems, a cost-effective and secure Linux alternative can reduce total cost of ownership. Fewer licensing fees and streamlined maintenance mean significant long-term savings. Improve security. Open source solutions allow for better oversight and quicker responses to vulnerabilities. Enhance digital sovereignty. By managing and modifying their own IT infrastructure, public institutions can have greater control over their data and software updates. However, it's important to note that EUOS is still in its proof of concept phase. The journey from a promising prototype to widespread deployment involves overcoming challenges such as user training, interoperability with legacy systems, and garnering political and institutional support. Collaborating with regional players. An interesting question raised by the community is whether EUOS could have benefited from closer collaboration with existing European projects. Projects like OpenSUSE or even KDE's upcoming initiatives might offer complementary strengths and a more European flavor. Although the current project is built on Fedora, there is potential for future collaboration or even for EUOS to evolve into a more regionally integrated platform as it grows and matures. Conclusion. In summary, EUOS represents a bold step towards achieving digital sovereignty in Europe. By leveraging open source principles and a flexible, layered architecture, this initiative not only promises cost savings and enhanced security, but also aims to reduce dependency on a few large software vendors like Microsoft.
Whether or not it will disrupt Windows hold in the EU remains to be seen, but its very existence is a powerful statement about the future of public IT. What do you think? Can EUOS pave the way for a more independent digital ecosystem in Europe? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell.